Hey, yo, ladies, gentlemen, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas, we got a Thursday night football game between a division that is battling for first place right now. Who can get to two wins the quickest out of these two teams and maybe catch the Cowboys who are in astounding in first place right now, I believe at two and four. Crazy division right now in the NFC East. Everybody knows about the combined wins of like five right now. Just absolutely crazy. But look, everybody's going to tell you this is what's going to happen on Twitter. Oh, we have to watch this game tonight. Oh, this is the game we have to watch is what your other content creators, your slouches of content creators are going to be saying. Meanwhile, they're going to sit the ass down and they're going to watch that game because about four months ago when football was in question, and even when it's a normal summer, we're all chomping at the bitch just to watch preseason and like the local players from Arby's, like they're getting them at the Arby's fast food to telling them to come onto the field and try out. We love watching that. So when you got guys on the field tonight, yes, I know Carson Wentz has struggled. Daniel Jones has struggled behind both of them, bad offensive lines. But when you have actual players on the field, some of which are going to be talented, all of them, this is going to be a game that people are going to want to watch it doesn't have the greatest total that's for sure but it's nfl football and there's a lot of dollar ruskies up for grabs on thursday night football i'm gonna help you break it down if you're brand new here this is what we do at least for some of the showdown slates we cover the main slates check all that stuff out betting prop bets a lot of stuff going out on this channel and my patreon link down below for more tools because the more informed you are with projections ownership rankings all this other type of stuff and analysis that is on the premium side on patreon the better your chances of winning if you're not going to be informed with that type of stuff you're just pretty much dead money and really any games that you're playing in dfs so i'm going to just go down by the salary cap and i'm going to add in whether i have interest some interest no interest and then we're going to do a live stream on thursday night around 6 30 p.m eastern time for an hour where i'll finalize my lineups i'll finalize 150 max that i'm playing in the optimizer talk about some rules and answer your questions that's the whole point of it a q a and we'll talk about this stream so a lot of money up for grabs we're going to get into it and before we do like this video takes two seconds big subscribe button pops up i really appreciate that as we push towards 31,000 subscribers thank you in advance and the video is sponsored indeed right now by Superdraft. If you're not familiar with Superdraft, if you watch my content, you already know they're a multiplier format. And basically, instead of a salary cap base, you're just going to get a multiplier. So for instance, tonight, you're going to have a multiplier right now on Carson Wentz of 1x, meaning he gets one times his points. But if you want to go down just a little bit more, another quarterback on the slate, Daniel Jones, a 1.4x multiplier, meaning that he gets his points multiplied by 1.4x, 40% more. So that's the whole point of it. A little bit of ownership in there as well. Also, just the projections. You can find those down below. The Superdraft play that I like the most tonight, Austin Scott. It's going to be pretty clear here unless they adjust his Superdraft multiplier. It's at 1.8, by far my best super draft play by about six fantasy points. You can get the rest of those and DraftKings projections and ranks for the slate down below. Now let's get into it starting at the top with Carson Wentz, as you can see. Carson Wentz right now averaging over 39 attempts per game. That's good usage, but only getting 233 and a half yards per game right now. But he is picking it up in terms of the rushing yards department. And we saw that last week a lot more. He just has to run for his life behind this offensive line. Now he currently has more interceptions than touchdowns, and that's not great. But the Giants rank 18th in pressure and 25th in coverage right now. So it's a very good matchup behind this 18th ranked pass blocking unit. I have him projected as the highest projected player on the slate. Now that shouldn't shock anybody based on his price point, based on the fact that he's a quarterback with a lot of usage in a fine matchup. Now the Giants, a lot of people probably don't expect their defense to be that good. It's better than advertised. James Bradbury has been one of the top pro football focused cornerbacks in the league. So that will help you out. So Carson Wentz, I'm going to have interest in. I might not get a ton of him. I might not get a lot of him in the captain spot relative to some other players on the slate, but I have interest in Carson Wentz. And normally I will have interest in quarterbacks if they're affordable. If you're in like the $9,000 range, definitely I'm probably gonna have some sort of interest unless it's just a brutal matchup or you just straight out stink. Well, when quarterbacks are in this 10K range, I have interest, especially when both of them on this slate are mobile. You have Daniel Jones just attempting 33 and a half attempts per game, a gross 203 yards per game right now, seeing just 6.1 yards per attempt. And he also has more interceptions than touchdowns. Only three touchdown passes this season. I believe they've all gone to Darius Slayton as well. So he's running more as well, though. Last week, he had six attempts for 66 yards. He was running a lot. He was taking off and running on some design runs as well. But Philadelphia, number three in pressure. And this is the scary thing, the dead last offensive line and pass protection is this New York Giants line. So that's scary. I have interest in Daniel Jones because again, even if he puts up one of these bad performances, 200 yards, a touchdown, 20 rushing yards on the ground, right? He stays out of the interception department or if he loses one on the DraftKings scoring, he loses one. You're still looking at somewhere around like the 15 point mark more times than not. And that's just going to get it done or maybe not get it done, but at least be in play uh, based on this type of a slate. And he's not that expensive when there's not a lot of overall weapons. I mean, both these teams are just completely banged up. I should mention that Zach Ertz, Miles Sanders, Dallas Goddard, those guys are not gonna be back for this one. Alshon Jeffrey will be questionable. They expect Deshaun Jackson back, according to Adam Schefter. So that's all banged up right there. You're going to have Boston Scott and Corey Clement in the Eagles' backfield. You're going to, we'll talk about them in a second. On the Giants' side of this, obviously no Saquon Barkley. Maybe Sterling Shepard will be back. They said it's going to be a game-time decision, says Judge. We're going to have to see. That's their coach. Uh, coach Judge, we're going to have to see if he gets taken off the IR. If he is back, well, then you can probably just write off the name of Austin Mack. You probably never heard of it, and you probably never will have to. If he's out, Austin Mack did run 15 routes last week. He's just $400 in this slate, so we'll have to track that. Outside of that, that's pretty much it at this point. For the 
offensive injuries. So Daniel Jones, I'll have some interest in as well. Now we get to Darius Slayton, who should have another touchdown. They actually cut Damian Ratley after he had an awful, awful penalty when they faced the Cowboys. It brought back a big Darius Slayton touchdown, but he's been on the field a ton, basically playing like 100% of the snaps when he's out there, but they only ran, they didn't get a lot of pass attempts off in their last game. He only ran 20 routes somewhere around there, but he's basically running somewhere around this 32 route mark. If they have to play from behind a lot, it'll start to go through 35 somewhere in that department. They're expected to be playing from behind three and a half point underdogs in this one. He's a candidate to see Darius Slay, who's the number 39 pro football focused cornerback right now, allowing a 70% catch rate. Last week, just ran 20 routes because they didn't pass a lot, but he did see four targets, a touchdown, 41 yards. This offense is just brutal. So at $9,200, I can't get too optimistic about him. Like he's going to be in play for me, but he's not going to be a yes. He doesn't project out as nicely as some of the guys value wise below him and also pure projection. We'll talk about this guy that we're getting to right now and Travis Fulgham, who Travis Fulgham is being like marketed on some of the NFL.com stuff right now and all the commercials. Like he's being up there right now with Slayton and some of the pictures with Daniel Jones. It's pretty crazy because look, he's now had three weeks of being like the wide receiver one on this team. And even if Alshon Jeffrey is going to return to this game, Alshon Jeffrey to me is now a backup. Alshon Jeffrey might be on the field in four wide receiver sets or in the red zone as a body, but Travis Fulgham has been showing that he's very good. And Alshon Jeffrey for about three years now has been showing that he's unreliable and very bad at football. Of course, relative to other NFL players, he's way better than I am if you're just talking about a compare to his football skills to anybody. Man, Fulgham has looked fantastic. And in back-to-back brutal matchups, Pittsburgh against Joe Hayden plays 87% of the snaps, runs 34 routes, 10 catches, 152 yards, a touchdown, finishes as the wide receiver two that week with over 30 fantasy points. Last week finishes again a top 10 wide receiver, number nine overall with 19 and a half fantasy points against the Baltimore Ravens and Jimmy Smith. And he saw part of the game, Marcus Peters, a very difficult matchup, six catches on 10 targets. He ends up as the wide receiver nine, like I said, 23 targets over the past couple of weeks. So you're going to tell me now he gets the Giants and James Bradbury, a tough matchup. Okay. Okay, I understand that, but he's been beating these tough matchups, getting all the usage in the world. Deshaun Jackson will return, but I think that's just going to absolutely take away John Hightower's usage of 30 plus routes like he ran last week. Deshaun Jackson will take those and probably see, you know, four or five, maybe six targets. But Fulgham is still going to be in line as the wide receiver one. That's how I'm projecting him on this team. He's going to be a yes for me right now, just based on how often he's being used. He's been leading this team in routes the past couple of weeks, running 40 routes last week, and he's quickly becoming the best pass catcher on this team. Keep in mind, no Miles Sanders. That's to a lesser extent for Fulgham, but no Zachary either. So even if you do get Deshaun Watson back, the guy last week in Earth who also saw double digit targets is now out of this offense and there's no Goddard to pick those up either. Next up is Boston Scott. No Miles Sanders. Boston Scott came in and saw all of the work in week six. Corey Clement did not see any of the work once Miles Sanders went down. He saw all the work. He ended up seeing two attempts, 18 routes and saw two targets. Now in week one, he started when Miles Sanders was out. He got banged up in the third quarter, had to come out. But in week one, what you ended up seeing was nine attempts, two catches on 24 routes on two targets for 19 yards. Corey Clement also saw some work that week, but it looks like Boston Scott's going to be the main guy this week. Boston Scott grades out as an awesome play. He's my best super draft play. He's one of the best plays on this slate for showdown, for captain, whatever form you want to put him in. He's going to be chalky. Keep that in mind. But $8,400 is too cheap, in my opinion, for a dual threat running back. Like if Miles Sanders was on the slate, he'd be in probably the 9K range. I think Boston Scott should be a little bit closer to that. Next up is Evan Ingram. And I want to like Evan Ingram. I really want to like Evan Ingram, but just they're not using him right, right? He had like a 15 yard catch or 20 yard catch to start off that game last week. And then nothing happened after that. It's hard to trust him even after having incredible matchups. Last week in week six, two catches on two targets, 30 yards. Not great. He's still a top five tight end in terms of his overall usage. He has a 99% route participation. He's just basically not blocking at all. So that's number one in the NFL. He's number five in tight end snaps. He's number nine in target share at 18 and a half for tight ends. He's just not being used all that much. And he's not converting, especially in the red zone. Now he had the rushing attempt for a touchdown when they faced the Cowboys. He had a special teams one called back. So his season could look a little bit better overall, but still in terms of his usage, not great. He actually saw his least snaps in that last game at 78%, ran his least routes. Again, they didn't throw a lot, but just 17, his least before that was 28. So a pretty big dip there. And all you're getting right now the past two weeks is five targets out of him and three receptions. I do expect this to turn around at some point. Matchup in the middle of the field will be fine again. So I'm not fully ruling him out, but he's barely touching like nine fantasy points in my projection. So we'll have some interest, but not a ton. Next up is Devonte Freeman and Devonta Freeman, the Giants running back 7,400. Look, it's a fair price point. Like look at this week seven, 73% of the snaps, a hundred percent of the carries in this backfield. And he saw two thirds of the running back targets. He ran 11 routes overall. So he's not being used a ton there, but he's at least getting some usage, maybe somewhat game flow independent. The usage has been fantastic. The Eagles do rank number nine though in run defense and the Giants run blocking is just 24th. So he's likely a touchdown or bust, but since he's getting so much usage, there is a chance that he could score two touchdowns, which definitely makes him viable, but it would also make him viable in the captain spot at his price point. So since he is touchdown or bust, he's not going to be out of the question because based on the usage that he's getting, he can definitely get you a touchdown. So he's in play for me. I haven't projected a peek behind the curtain for 11 and a half fantasy points right now. Again, all those projections or rankings can be found down below. Next up is Alshon Jeffrey. Look, we have 
to see what happens here, but he is just so overpriced. I'm very tempted to make him a full out no. I think I did right now in my projection. So I'm going to put him as a no. He's questionable with his hamstring. It seems like it's partially the hamstring, but also just like conditioning at this point. He hasn't played in a while. He seems to have been out of shape for like the past two years anyways. He's just been a jump ball receiver. All the lower body injuries to this guy, like he can't get down the field anymore. He was rarely targeted downfield last year when he was healthy and the year before that. So he's basically like this red zone target for you. And he's overpriced in that, in my opinion, for that. Like I think Fulgham will be ahead of him. Deshaun Jackson on the opposite outside. Greg Ward in the slot when they run there. Richard Rodgers at tight end. Boston Scott in the backfield. That's going to be the starting offense. Even if Alshon Jeffrey is active, I think he'll still run as the wide receiver for not see a lot of routes. He's priced right now as if he's going to be a starting wide receiver. Maybe he does, but I think he probably runs somewhere in the mid to low teens at best in this game. Maybe a lot of red zone usage for him. I'm not going to be interested at this price tag right now. Next up is going to be Sterling Shepard. We have to track Sterling Shepard. They have to take him off the IR. I'm pulling up Roto World right now on Twitter to see if there's been any news as of today. If he's come off the IR, Joe Judge said that it's going to be very close to lock. They're going to see what he looks like in the pregame warmups to see if he's going to play or not. He's on the short-term IR for three weeks. He's eligible to return this week if they indeed want to take him off of that IR. Not seeing anything as I record this on Wednesday morning, if indeed he is taken off the IR, but it's going to come down to that. If he is going to be active, I like him, right? He's going to go into the slot a little bit, mainly Golden Tate's role, then go to the outside where he might have to see Darius Slay, but I'm not too worried about that matchup for him. I also think Slay will probably still stay on Slayton. $7,000, it's still expensive for somebody coming off an injury, maybe going to be limited if he's really going to be a game time decision. So he's not a yes for me, but I do have him projected for close to double digit fantasy points right around there. So he's going to be in play. His teammate Golden Slate in the slot, just 11 routes last week. Like they were not using these guys at all. It's just been brutal. Resulted in one catch for 11 yards. Right now through five games so far in 2020, he's ran 28 routes per game, seen right around five targets per game and just 31 yards per game. So not being targeted downfield at all. Honestly, the slot was where Daniel Jones targeted a lot last year. Sterling Shepard had success there. Golden Tate had a ton of success there when he was targeted from the slot. So Golden Tate still being used in the slot a ton. It's just not really getting great. Now, Robbie Coleman, who they acquired from the Rams, I thought was one of the best offseason pickups, just $1 million from the Rams, but he struggled a ton, allowing 1.94 yards per reception and coverage route right now. So that's actually pretty concerning. I have interest in Golden Tate. He's close to a yes for me at 6,600. If Sterling Shepard is indeed out, he'll move closer to a yes. Right now, I've been projected for in the projections about close to seven and a half, eight fantasy points. That would definitely move up a little bit if Shepard was ruled out. I'm currently projecting Shepard in. Deshaun Jackson looks like a bargain in my opinion. Look, he's reported to be due back according to Adam Sheffer. He'll likely take the John Hightower role, which has been a pretty strong role. Hightower has a rookie ran 30 routes last week alone. I tell will resort back to the backup right now. He'll see some Bradbury, I assume. So I think Bradbury will go to Fulgham as well. That seems like a better matchup overall for Bradbury's skill set. So Deshaun Jackson, if he's going to be back now, who knows if he'll be limited since they're ruling him in this early as opposed to Sterling Shepard coming to a game time decision. I think it'll be a little bit better. And honestly, he looks like one of the better price players on the slate. So I do have interest. Corey Clement saw no work in week six, not even a route run once you had Miles Sanders go down and he was active. So I don't think that he wasn't epic. Now in week one, he did see six carries for 19 yards and he actually ended up picking up 15 routes and two targets, two receptions. Part of that work, a little bit of it was when Boston Scott got hurt in the third quarter, but I expect him to be involved here. I don't know. Maybe he sees somewhere around six to eight touches. If there's a fumble from Boston Scott or he gets re-injured, obviously even more than uh, or potential for more for Corey Clement at that point. So at 5,200, he is expensive. Like if you're playing one lineup, I wouldn't play him. If you're playing 150s, he's going to be in my exposures just because of the fact that he's going to see somewhere around potentially double digit touches. I don't think that he will, but there's that opportunity for him too, especially if Boston Scott struggles or indeed gets hurt. So I'm going to put him as a maybe for like guys who play a lot of lineups. But if you're a guy or a girl who does not play a lot of lineups, he's probably a no for me. Richard Rodgers, $5,000. No Goddard, no Ertz. He will be the tight end. And even last week, you had Zach Ertz out there seeing 10 targets, running 28 routes. During that usage, you still had Richard Rodgers operating in the Dallas Goddard role, the tight end two. 19 routes, saw three targets, caught all of them for 31 yards. Now you're going to tell me that 10 targets from last week, all these routes run that Ertz have had on the season are all going to be evaporated. And Richard Rodgers is probably going to take on the former Lion and Packer, the tight end one role in this offense. I do like that. Expect more more usage there. I'm very close to making Rodgers a yes. He's still going to be a maybe for me because there is some other value options down here. And there's also some other guys right around this price range. But at 5k, he does stand out as somebody in that range. That does seem very appealing. Maybe he's in line for like a five or six target type of a game. Greg Ward has not been producing at all. He's barely in play for me. His projection does not look good. He remains in the slot even if DJX returns. He ran 39 routes last week, but it just resulted in three targets, two catches for like 19 yards. Has not been great at all this year. Just 7.8 yards per reception. He's number 50 overall in Yak this season, even though he's been getting a ton of usage. He's been very bad. Like he's had tough spots like Marlon Humphreys last week. You're probably going to get shut down, right? But it's just been brutal overall. They do run a lot of three wide receiver sets. So he'll be on the field a lot below 5k. There's not many other options in this range. So at least he's in play. In a low total game, the defenses and kickers actually seem more appealing. If you're somebody who plays cash on a showdown slate, well, then the kickers become a little bit more appealing than normal in these lower total games. Because if you're not going to have overall touchdowns and other points and position players scoring more points because of that, well, the kickers seven and eight fantasy point type of days might actually get into some optimal lineup. So I have interest in both defenses here. I do have 
with more interest in the Eagles as a favorite. I have them projected for like a point more. It's nothing major. They're all going to be in play for me. No interest in Arcega Whiteside. He's been fully cemented right now and surpassed by a man in full gum. And if Alshon comes back, even worse for him. Caden Smith is averaging nine routes run per game, the backup tight end right now for the Giants. I'm not going to be interested because he's priced for it at this point. He has 10 catches on 12 targets so far in the season. That's very good. I mean, seeing two targets for a game. Uh, but if he was like a thousand, maybe we have some interest and hope to find the end zone and a touchdown for him. I'm probably not going to get there though at 2K. He's definitely going to need to have a touchdown and maybe even a little bit more than that at this point. Deion Lewis, it's hard to roster him when Freeman's just taking all of the usage. Now, if they get down big in this game as their underdogs, maybe Deion Lewis' pass catching ability comes more into play at just $1,600. But he ran just six routes last week, was getting doubled up last week in the routes run department, even by Devonta Freeman. If the game script does go a crazy way, maybe you build a crazy lineup where Deion Lewis is in it and maybe he sees like five targets, three catches, 30 yards, and that's enough to get it done. I currently, though, if I'm catering this video to people who have like only one to 10 to 20 lineups, the live stream, we could talk about all types of different things, my 150s, my 20 maxes, single entry, three max type of builds as well. Again, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. Check it out. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe, all that stuff so you can be notified. Well, then, yeah, you can get some Deion Lewis in your 150s. I don't even know if I'll have him there, though. John Hightower is now going to be the backup with Deshaun Jackson back. Don't expect, and if you're looking at game logs, these 30 routes run and these target shares, he might get down to like only like five to eight routes run, especially if Alshon comes back. Austin Mack is a name to at least just remember. It might not be anything major here. But they did cut Damian Ratley, so that's a guy that's off this team. Now, maybe they'll re-sign him, so keep an eye on the transactions page for the NFL or on Roto World. But they cut Damian Ratley. They ended up getting an injury to CJ Board. So now they're down to this guy named Austin Mack, who last week, if you're looking at it, he actually did run 15 routes, saw two targets, caught one of them for two yards. The only way he becomes viable is if Sterling Shepard remains out, which there's a good chance. He's basically a game time decision right now, because then based on what they're doing, unless they re-sign Ratley or bring somebody else up, you're basically going to be looking at a wide receiver core of Slayton, Golden Tate in the slot, Slayton on the outside, and Austin Mack on the opposite outside as of right now of this recording. And we've seen on these showdown slates like the Darius Shepherds and the Malik Taylors for the Packers and some other guys who have not been, I would say, highly touted, right? Some of the guys from the Titans when they had the COVID game on Tuesday, some of these guys like people want to play them, but they kind of just stink. That Westbrook guy, right? They're not going to get a lot of usage. So even if Sterling Shepard does miss, like Austin Max upside might actually be seeing two or three targets in the short range, catches like one for nine yards. That's never going to do anything for you, but he's $400. So you're basically just playing him to hope, to hope that he falls into the end zone. This is not Tyler Johnson coming into a full-on role as a very good rookie who actually had usage. This is a guy that nobody knows about who might not be that great of a player, probably is not that great of a player. And I wouldn't expect much usage because here's the end of the day, even though he's going to run some routes, if he's not that great of a player and the cornerback against him is pretty decent, Odds are he's not going to be getting open all that much. That's what you saw with the Packers wide receivers. That's what you saw with Nick Westbrook in that one game as well for the Titans. So keep in mind that Max on here. I'll put him as an X. I don't have any interest at all if indeed Sterling Shepard is going to be active. But if Sterling Shepard's out, you can probably start to project him for like three, four fantasy points. And in this range of $400, that's at least worth looking at on a showdown slate. And then these final two guys, the tight ends that might fill in right now for the Eagles are interesting. So as of I'm um, looking at this, they're still in the active roster. Hakeem Butler was drafted by the Cardinals as a wide receiver. So he's on this roster at $200. He has not really done anything yet. He has a great speed score. So keep an eye on who's active for this team and who might be starting if they give us uh, depth chart updates as the tight end number two, because the Eagles use a ton of two tight end sets. This can also be a bonus for a guy in Greg Ward if they're not going to have as many two tight end sets on the field because they don't trust Akeem Butler and Jason Kroom, the other tight ends now on this roster with no Dallas Goddard or Zach Ertz. Maybe they just go to more three wide receiver sets, which puts Greg Ward on the field more. But again, he's been on the field a lot, just hasn't even been producing. So Hakeem Butler and Jason Kroom, I don't have them projected out for anything. I'm going to just put them as maybes. That does not mean go put them in your one lineup, right? It just means track the news, track who's going to be the tight end two on this team right now, since Ertz and Goddard are going to be out. Rodgers operating as the tight end one is our assumption here, Richard Rodgers. And if you see come game time that Jason Crom is inactive and Hakeem Butler is active, well, Butler now is going to operate as potentially the tight end two on this team, makes him a little bit appealing. Again, he might only have one catch for like nine yards, so it's nothing crazy, but we just want to track this because this team does use a lot of two tight end sets. Jason Crom is a former Buffalo Bill. Look, he's played like two total snaps this year. I think he found his way into the end zone on one of them. That's why you're getting like seven fantasy point per game projection from him. But in 2018, he was pretty decent with the Bills. 22 catches, 259 yards, and two touchdowns. So about 2.3 targets per game. He might be in line for this tight end two role. It's either him or Hakeem Butler. So keep an eye on what the news is going to be throughout the week. I don't think it'll be that impactful, but it could be if they fall into the end zone. So thank you so much for tuning into this. I'll basically scroll down so you can see what I did down here and towards the bottom of the screen. There you go. There's the names. If you're watching on the YouTube version, the video version, listening on the podcast, how you doing? Leave a five-star rating review. It takes 30 seconds of your time. You get entered into a raffle to potentially win $50. That is $50 rooskies from my Myself, a giveaway it takes nothing to get entered money wise except for like a minute of your time on the podcast I'm trying to build that podcast so i would really greatly appreciate that even if you're watching on youtube going over there before you leave like button 
subscribe button pops up, all the projections and rankings for this slate. The more informed you are, the better your chance of winning. If you're not informed, if you're just mashing buttons together, not looking at projections, ownerships, potentially rankings, things like that. I mean, you're just dead money. You're like you're, you're throwing away money. You might have fun doing it, but you're still throwing away money. So if you do have the means and are interested, down below is my Patreon. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Check out Superdraft promo code SAL. S-A-L will get you a 50% deposit match up to a thousand dollar rooskies. My top plan Superdraft, Austin Scott. Go ahead, sign up over there right now. You'll get yourself some free money bonus and you can play on their multiplier format where none of the pros really play right now. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.